I think that the rule is quite essential because we live in this digital age and a lot of our lives has gone onto the internet by now. Uh, democ democracy in general has the problem of not having updated itself for something like 200 years and it's gone out of alignment with the society that we live in. It's not in the same place. And the way to use electronic democracy is both a way to correct that, but also, which is another side to the same coin, also to get people again interested in the civic processes, which people have, for un understandable reason, lost a lot of interest in. A uh, participatory budgeting project in Reykjavik is called Better Neighborhoods, and as the name says, it's about improving the neighborhoods of Reykjavik. And the project was not completely uh, digital from the start, but mostly it, uh, the ideas for the project are called out for on the internet. And then there is a process of uh, how much they will cost and can we do this. And then people again vote on the internet for the ideas or the project that they want to see happen. And then after that, the city creates the project, not on the internet, obviously, and then people obviously use them as well. So everything that matters except for the evaluation of the project is done on the internet, and we're working on trying to also get that done more transparently, which would be on the internet, at least partially. The balance is going to be different in every project, but the learning is probably going to be more or less the same. Uh, Probably. Uh, the thing is that we, the digital internet thing is very recent. It's only like 20 something years since it started becoming part of our lives. The offline processes of meeting physically at meetings and talking to each other has been with us since we be became humans, whenever that was. Uh, the thing is that both of those processes have pros and cons. They have good things and they have bad things. And what is most important now is to overcome the bad sides or the negative sides of work trying to work together on the internet by using the positive experience that we have had thousands of years to learn in doing offline and meeting up. And we have to find a way to make sure that we use the best of the internet and the best of the offline old world and not the worst of each of them. And that's the difficult challenge I had, but that's something we've been at Citizens Foundation, we've been doing a lot of thinking and working on that and lots of other people in the world as well. A uh, bad thing about the internet, for example, is that it's really easy to close yourself into a bubble of only people that totally agree with you with everything and everybody else is an idiot. That's just a simple bad thing. It's also really about the internet is a bad thing on, uh, on comment section, on news sites, for example, when people start arguing about each other instead of debating the issue at hand. Uh, a negative issue of a uh, negative side of uh, physical meetings or protests is that you may have a really good meeting and everybody is in accord and you go and you want to do something but then just something doesn't happen because the whole fun was at the meeting and after that came the work. And that is actually a kind of work that is really well suited to doing on the internet. So this kind of combination, translating the experiences from the meetings into the internet, working with them there, organizing another meeting which is not stuck in the same place where the other meeting was, but you have taken it one step further and thereby trying to sort of lift ourselves up. On the one thing, it's difficult for me to recommend anything to a different culture because my culture is my upbringing. I know my people. I don't know your people as well as I know. For one thing, I don't know your language, and if you don't know the language, you can't know the culture. Uh, but to recommend, it's obviously the classical things. Look at what others have done, see if it worked, and use what worked and throw away the stuff that didn't work. Really simple, obvious kind of stuff. On a more sort of uh, concrete level, what is most important is that you let the people, let the citizens know that there is something going on that they can participate in and also, and most importantly, let them know that they, what they are doing is something that you are using and you have to tell them, you have to reward them by saying, you are a part of me, you are a part of this process of making things better. Uh, 
One general observation is that the uh, officials in the city of Reykjavik have said repeatedly, most of those projects we would never have dreamed of ourselves. So projects that come from the grassroots, that come from the people themselves, they are somehow different than the coming from the top projects. So uh, that in, in itself is enough for me to know that it's worth doing it, if you see what I mean. Uh, there's all kinds of different projects. Uh, people want to have uh, more benches for people to sit on in the, on their afternoon walks. Uh, they want to have better playgrounds for the kids and sometimes have innovative ideas even about what the playground should be like. Uh, they, they, there's, a, uh, there's a stairs going down to the beach for the kids at the school and kindergarten to, uh, to go for the, to day trips on the beach. Uh, traffic lights on dangerous places, actually one traffic light that works with that same stair which is brilliant, so the kids can go from school and all the way down to the beach in security. All kinds of like smaller ideas that make things a bit better. Stuff to exercise out in the middle of a park and all kinds of little things. Well, the main premise, the ground, the, 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 yeah, the, the bottom line sort of is to give people more influence. And I actually, I mean, we chose to do it this way, call out for ideas, evaluate how much they cost, citizens vote on the ideas, and then the city executes them and citizens use them. I think that this model is something that is going to be close to what everybody is doing, if you see what I mean. This is not the rocket science. Democracy is about people debating, people participating. Uh, it's not about inventing new brilliant solutions to problems because we have found all those solutions. We just need to apply them in this way to this new technology and to this new world that we live in. So, like I said, this, I, I can't really, I mean, if you show me a city and tell me what the issues are, I could help you do a plan for it. But this is generally always in any participatory budgeting that I know of, that this is more or less the mechanism that people are working from. The differences are in what's the scope of the ideas, what's the amount of money that's put into it, who's going to finally decide, is it the citizens or is it the city? It's those, well, the last one is not a detail, but the ones before that are just more or less details. But in some, pla some places, the city has the last word on a decision. It's still participatory budgeting, but it's not participatory budgeting with direct democracy. It's participatory budgeting with collaborative democracy, which is different, but it's still much better than this 200-year-old system that we haven't changed in all this time. I don't want to take specific examples, but we can see in some countries in Europe that democracy is maybe not breaking down, but at least melting down a bit. Uh, I don't know, like last, last I heard about Denmark, for example, they just put a new law where they can forcibly take away the money and jewelry from immigrants to pay for the cost of having the immigrants. So you can see we're not really that far away from 1935 or whatever uh, year you would put. Uh, to keep democracy alive is something that is the responsibility of every citizen and it's going to be a struggle because there are strong powers, much stronger powers than small right-wing, extreme right-wing Nazi parties because there are powers in the world that would much more rather be able to decide for us what to do than for us to decide it with democracy. So I don't think, uh, I agree with what I think was meant with the question that when you start, it's really difficult to go back. But when I can see in some countries, like in Hungary, now in Denmark, in other countries, can see how fragile democracy really is, and then I don't think there is any assurance anywhere. But the only way for us to keep up a, what we call a modern democratic society, is that everybody has to pitch in and realize that this can be lost.